Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwill with the FX Market Insight for Wednesday, the 6th of March. Right, as we come into the Asian session here, you can see, uh, well, Tokyo is about to sort of kick into gear. Now, what we've got coming up today, it's a, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, not a lot in Europe, but uh, some chunky stuff in Asia and then uh, across the North American session. So if I just scroll down here and give you a bit of a look at the uh, upcoming release, this is where your focus should really be. Okay, we've got the Aussie GDP numbers. Now, the productivity numbers are extremely important. It's like condensing all the other numbers together and give us an output, whether the economy is going good or bad or indifferent. Right, it's very important. It's a quarterly number, so it is high impacting. Now, you can trade this number as soon as it comes out. Now, from here, we're going to wait for uh, the next sort of decent number to come out, the ADP non-farm employment change. This is the weekly, uh, or the number that comes out a, a couple of days before the, obviously, the non-farm payrolls. It's a different data, but it's trying to mimic Friday's data. So it does have an impact, and uh, you could expect it to move the US dollar around if there is some sort of level of variance. But the, the big event will be, and it always is in the market, is the central bank and their interest rate decisions. Now, we've got the Bank of Canada. No change in interest rates expected, so it will come down to the statement. You know, that is actually a tricky situation. If we do have a, um, if, if there's a potential change in the market on interest rates, it becomes a really active, good trading opportunity. When there's no change expected, it becomes a little bit ambiguous because the statement can, uh, can be a little bit gray on matters. So just be aware, but this is uh, potentially a huge event for the CAD and the CAD crosses. All right, now, they're their major data releases. What have we got in the, in the way of uh, the fundamentals and technicals? Well, technically, okay, dollar yen is having a bit of a pause, but it is still moving topside. Dollar CAD screaming to the topside, and Aussie still drifting lower, losing a bit of momentum at the moment. But it still does have the sort of the dovish backing of the RBA at this point. Now, don't forget, with the uh, ADP employment numbers as well, the US dollar is drifting uh, at the moment. Okay, it is starting to rally, starting to go higher, but it hasn't really broken out of recent ranges. So that's why I've got it sideways. It doesn't mean it's not moving higher or has potential. It just means that actually at the moment, it's still within the most recent ranges. And that's the same for Euro as well. Euro on the alleys is drifting lower, sort of quite nicely. But on the bigger scheme of things, the daily and weekly charts, it's still within recent ranges. And, uh, and finally, Sterling's having a bit of a pause as uh, Brexit sort of just rolls over for the moment. All right, so that for me, you know, the real, the real clear focus, especially coming up uh, with the Aussie GDP figures coming out, um, well, in about less than an hour, um, you're really focusing on the technical aspect. Now, with the, uh, the chart here, it's starting to get a little, you can see here how we've got this resistance line sort of coming down. What we have got is um, the currency's lost momentum. Right, we had that big anticipation yesterday from the RBA meeting. The statement was very dull, if anything. I was going to say something else, but very dull. Didn't give us a huge amount to work with. So the GDP numbers now come into play as it's sort of drifting through this resistance line. So to me, at this point, that resistance line, you know, doesn't really come into play. Um, if anything, short term, you've got uh, you got this sort of top here at seventy nine. It hasn't been above there since the. Uh, um, the RBA, so we might sort of see something there, but um, you know, if the GDP numbers are, are, are weak, then you've got to expect it to kick back into gear with the current trend, which is down, and that moves with the overall bias of the Aussie. So to me, weak GDP numbers is our best opportunity. If the data does come in somewhat a little bit stronger than expected, then you might see a pop above 71. That could be a short-term long trade there as well. Now, dollar CAD, just to give you a bit of a heads up before the Bank of Canada meeting, Check out where this thing is. It's uh, it's screamed to the top side. Um, you know, oil still sitting around 56 bucks. There's a bit of decoupling there. What you've got to do is is try and really weigh up um, what's happening in the market. The the the, the expectation is, and why dollar cad so high. The fundamental Canadian fundamentals have been very weak um, overall now, and the market is expecting a less than cheery Bank of Canada, and that's the sort of text you're getting from. Uh, from Reuters these days. So the market's expecting something really like poor or dour from or dovish from the Bank of Canada. If that's not the case, then we may see uh, dollar CAD sort of swing back down, back down towards 133 at least. 
all right? But at the moment, up here, it's going to be anyone's. It's like there's no technicals around. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be hard as hell to trade. So just be aware, that's not your easy option. The uh, Aussie Bank of, uh, sorry, the Aussie GDP figures much better. All right, guys, that's uh, pretty much it for me. There's not a hell of a lot to get super excited. All you do is focus on the data at hand. Don't forget, if you click on the uh, data, you can find a bit more about the release there and uh, get yourself uh, a little bit more educated around what these releases are and what why they're important. All right, that's it for me, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the 247 Trade Zone. Cheerio.